Hi everybody, it's John back again with another Model in Box review. Today we're starting a new video series. Um, this is something that I did mention to a couple of subbers that I was going to start doing a video series uh, with an unusual title with very informative information for people out there that maybe don't know the model trade as well as some of us old hands. The, the video series is going to be called Models to Avoid Like the Plague. And we're actually going to do the first video in this series on a matchbox kit. The matchbox kit being the subject of the aircraft you're looking at in front of you. The aircraft is, of course, a Dassault Brigitte Dornier Alpha Jet. And this image is quite poignant because it shows the French and the German um, Alpha Jet 01 and Alpha Jet 02, respectively, the German prototypes that were used for the evaluation and the flight envelope and how the aircraft handled. They also built an Alpha Jet 3 and 4, one French and one German, and these were used and were more specialised to the French and Germans' needs. The French aircraft was tailored more for the basic trainer variant, and the ground attack variant was tailored for 04 for the German Luftwaffe, because the French wanted the Alpha Jet as a tactical, sorry, as a, as a light, uh, basic, and advanced trainer. And the German Luftwaffe wanted the aircraft as a tactical strike and reconnaissance aircraft. Um, <clears throat> and this picture is quite nice because it shows an images of both the two prototypes. And I'll probably be building an amalgamation of both of these two aircraft in one plane because Alpha Jet 01 is actually presently in the Frederikshamhaven Museum in Germany. I think it's in Munster. I can't remember exactly where it is in Germany, but it's it's um, it's the aircraft is actually there. And it's French on one side and German on the other. They've like amalgamated the two different prototypes and shown it in the one aeroplane. So that's the image of the two prototypes. We'll just go through the boxing history and uh, explain exactly what's going on with the history of this kit. The model itself is the Matchbox Dassault Brigitte Dornier Alpha Jet in the purple range. And this kit serial number was PK5 and constituted the fifth model in their purple range of the aviation aircraft released in 1972. There were of course 19 models in the Purple Range released in the first year and a number of kits were added in 1973 and then some more were added here and there to a total of 52 aircraft in their Purple Range. And by far the worst in terms of accuracy and overall look was the Alpha Jet. The Alpha Jet, the Matchbox Alpha Jet was a pure howler. It was absolutely dreadful because it was actually um, copied off an aircraft that never existed. It was an artist impression shown to the French and German governments, um, hoping to uh, secure a contract off them for, for the Alpha Jet, like the Euro trainer, if you like. Um, and the aircraft never actually existed, and Matchbox, never wanting to be late in producing an aircraft, actually produced the Alpha Jet model two years before the aircraft was actually built and entered its flight test program. Matchbox even released um, the second boxing of this kit before the, aer the real aeroplane was ever manufactured. So 1972 with the Type 1 boxing, you can tell a Type 1 boxing straight away because it's got a flip top lid. Um, and I've actually got a Type 1 boxing for the early version. And the thing I haven't mentioned also is the fact that I'm doing a comparison build with this particular model and I'll get into that why that is when we go through the boxing history. Um, <clears throat> now then, 1972 went through to 1973 and Matchbox released a second generation Type 2 um, boxing of this model. And the way you can tell the difference between the two kits is that the Type 2 had an open-ended box rather than a flip-top lid. But the model was exactly the same. It had the same colours. The sprues were red and white inside. Um, the fuselage being white and the wings being red. Um, pretty similar to the colours that you can see on the box art artwork there in front of you. So 1973. Also in 73, Matchbox released um, an AMT boxing of this kit for the American market. And this kit incorporated both the French and the German markings for the uh, train of prototypes but it also had additional markings for German um, had additional markings for the German prototype the actual German prototype that was listed for for aerial use but this again was based on the mock-up and artist impressions 
Remember, the Alpha Jet was never built until 1974, and this was 73's boxing through AMT, the American market for Matchbox. <clears throat> 1973 went through to 1982, and this is the reason why I'm doing a comparison build, because in 1982, Matchbox released what's called um, a retool of this particular kit. They did a couple of things with the Alpha Jet. What they did was they changed the sprue colours from red and white to burgundy and white, but they actually swapped the sprues around, and you'll see in a minute when you see the sprues in the boxes, but they also updated the tail fin on this particular aircraft because the original tail fin was really dreadful. Um, unfortunately, they didn't do anything with the air intakes and they did nothing with the nose comb. The nose comb is completely the wrong shape for both the French and the German trainers. And the air intakes were also the wrong shape. And the tail fin was drastically the wrong shape. It had far too much sweep and it was too tapered at the top. And also the the new generation aircraft that were being released in the 80s had these um, the little flange plates at the top of the tail fin there. And this air kit was actually released um, in Patriot de France colours and I believe a German um, a German tactical uh, strike ground ground attack aircraft version. And they did away with the trainer markings altogether. Um, and if you build this kit up as a Patriot de France, which I could actually, I could still see myself doing. I'm not quite sure yet. Not 100% sure, but we'll, we'll see what, what happens as we go through this. 1982 went through to 1987. Um, and this is the, the uh, boxing of the second kit that I've got. You can tell the 87 release because it has a logo here for something to do with the Patriot de France aerobatic team. Um, which for some reason has the red arrows on the front of the logo. And also, in on this window here, you've got Patriot de France instead of uh, Alpha Jet on the, on the markings, which is quite nice. 1987 went through to Matchbox's last boxing of this kit, and we have another first here for Matchbox. In 1987, they released this kit. I'm not quite sure what the alternative markings were for this model. It was probably a Patriot de France aircraft. But they also released it in the Belgium Air Force markings. And the Belgium Air Force used this aircraft, I'm pretty sure, as a tactical trainer and ground attack trainer, in much the same way that the RAF used the Hawk. Um, and this is the boxing which was being released in uh, the boxing artwork and the, like the releases that Ravel had an awful lot to do with whilst they were still in the process of uh, marketing Matchbox without actually owning them. They started to own Matchbox towards the end of the 1990s. And that is the last release of a Matchbox kit, um, which you can get of the Alpha Jet. Now, when they re when they revised the, um, the Alpha Jet with the Patrol de France artwork, they changed the colours of the sprues. And the sprues were also alternatively switched. The red fuselage became a burgundy fuselage sprue, and the white... Uh, fuselage. Sorry, the white fuselage became a burgundy fuselage sprue, and the red wings became a white wing fuse, uh, a white wing sprue. And you'll see that again when we when we go through the parts in a minute. So that's 1992. I just want to leave you a couple of images um, to give you an idea of the prototype that I'll be building. Um, I'll be building this prototype probably from. Um, the new tool kit because both the, actually I'm thinking about building both the prototypes both the actual artist impression that Matchbox had an idea that they were going to that the Alpha Jet was going to look like and another one of this particular aircraft in the Frederick Sharvan Museum now the interesting thing about this particular aircraft is it is the original Alpha Jet 01 which was the original French trainer prototype the thing is it's German on the starboard side and if you see the next image you can see that it's definitely French on the on the port side this is the same aircraft in the same museum um, and I've double checked this with the image it's definitely the same aircraft but they've merged the two trainers to show and reflect the two trainers in this particular aircraft so it's German on the uh, starboard side and French on the port side which would be quite interesting what I want to quickly do now is just pan the camera down very good and just give you an idea of what we've got here. 
There we go. Just turn the camera up a little tiny bit because I want to get the angle a little bit. There we go. That should do it. There we go. Got two kits here. This is the Type 1 box with a flip top lid. You can always tell the flip top lid because it's Type 1 box. And this is the 87 release with the uh, REF. Uh, Red Arrows logo and the Patriot of France listed on the front of the box. And this is the Reveal style um, marketing box artwork, box design that they had for Matchbox in the in the uh, late eight, 80s, early 80s and late 80s, before ownership was passed to them in about 1997, I think, 98, something like that. And these two kits, they're basically the same model, except for one major drastic change. And you'll see that in a minute, exactly, see exactly how that is. But first of all, we'll open the box, give you an idea of what's going on here. This is the actual wooden mock-up. This is a pretty good example of the wooden mock-up. You've got um, the aircraft as a white fuselage with red wings and tail planes. And that's a feature design of the actual kit. And that's pretty close to what the, the actual the kit is going to look like eventually. You've got some images here on the top of the box. This is PK, uh, I believe it's 8, 9 and 10. And PK7 at the end of Lysander. Um, these are just the next line of kits that you can uh, buy or you could buy. Uh, when the Type 1 boxings were released. Now we'll turn this upside down. <clears throat> Put the sprues into this box. And we'll just get the stuff out as we need to get the stuff out. Instruction leaflets. We'll start with the instruction leaflets. As with all first release boxings of the purple range, the instructions were always the same colour as the range of model they related to and in this case it would be a purple instruction leaflet on the back page you've got some information and all the other models that were released um, in 1972 um, which is quite nice there were actually 19 all together so it's not all of them it's up to pk12 i believe on the back page you've got some hot hints which give you an idea of how to do certain things paint parts before you assemble and this is a good trick because if you paint the parts on the sprue, you don't have to mess about holding on to them. And then you just, after you've cut them off and you put them in place, just touch them in with a brush. It's quite easy. Um, there were lots of hints and tips there, um, which was quite good. The water slide decals method there, which is there, quite good. Um, taping up fuselage halves. I use jigs nowadays, but that's also to tape up so you can actually get the like invasion stripes or whatnot on the side of the kit. The model itself builds up in five different stages and they're very, very basic, very easy to follow. In the first stage, you've got parts two, one and two, which is the pilot seat and the pilot. And there are, of course, two of these. These are doubled up as the aircraft is a tandem two-seat trainer. In section two, you're basically putting the fuselage halves together. There's not an awful lot of detail inside there, as you can see. And in section three, you're putting the tail planes and the air intakes and the jet nozzle covers and that rather interesting nose cone. And we'll get to that in a minute um, when I show you the the, uh, the parts on the sprue. The canopy's fitted at this stage as well, but I generally fit my canopies, as you all know, uh, toward the end of the build after the kit's been painted. Section four, you put the wings on to form the rest of the airframe. Um, in section five, you just basically put the undercarriage, undercarriage doors on and the wheels. As, um, it's quite easy, straightforward to follow and it's a very, very simple kit. Very simple indeed. That's the instructions. Quite easy to follow. No problems there whatsoever. The decals, the decals are quite interesting because the decals, you must remember that the decals are of an aircraft that never existed. But I can use these decals um, quite nicely and very easily because most of the decals that I'm after there are actually for the trainer variant that I need the decals for, for the Frederick Schumhaven aircraft. The only thing I don't need are these tail fin flashes which are featured on the kit. Don't need those at all because they're not actually on the real aircraft either, which is interesting. Um, on the real aircraft in the museum, there's no fin flash whatsoever on the rudder, which is quite nice. It makes it an awful lot easier to paint and finish the kit. The decals themselves, um, pro builders have actually slated these decals, stating that the French roundels have often got bad register. But you can see from this sheet that the register on those French decals seem to be quite good and the backing sheen is quite clear and 
the decals themselves aren't particularly raised. They don't look like they're pretty, you know, they don't look like they're going to be a problem. And to be honest with you, Matchbox model decals, <coughs> they seem to fare quite well with age. And, I'm, you know, I don't know why this is, but they seem to be of good enough quality to fare and still be quite usable, even though they're 40 years old, which is quite good. Um, this particular kit is about 48 years old, I believe. The stand... The stand is quite nice. Um, I'm hoping you get the benefits here of a new phone that I've got that I'm recording these images with because the images that I've got off this, this phone is actually wonderful. Um, and I can bring this right in. You can see the writing on the stand, the clarity of the stand. It's a really nice piece, actually. It's quite a nice one. These stands are very marketable, um, whether you may or may not know, but you can usually get two or three quid for one of these stands on eBay quite easily if you don't want to use them. And you want to mount your kit on um, on a, on its undercarriage. Now then, the cockpit canopy. The cockpit canopy on this kit, I wouldn't say it's crystal clear, but it's not that bad. And the framework isn't fantastic, but it should paint up okay. And as far as 72 sort of rendition canopies are concerned from Matchbox, that's a pretty much much of a muchness. It's pretty run of the mill for their kits. So that's not too bad either. Now, what I want to quickly do is I want to just show you the difference between the sprues. Everything else in these kits are identical, except for the sprues and the decals. I'll show you the decals as well in a minute, um, because the decals on this kit are quite nice too. One of the things you have to remember is that getting kits, old kits, out of production kits, um, is a bit of a balance between old tool and new tool because with old tool models you tend to get um, fresher sprues and with old models but in like more recent releases you tend to get better decals this is the cockpit canopy it's, it's exactly the same as the previous one um, the decal sheet on the newer release obviously you've got the patriot de france markings there and the german um, the German uh, ground attack variant, which is quite nice as well. The markings are they're a bit heavy set and they're pretty uh, they're pretty bold. I don't think the real markings would be as bold as this, but they're not bad. And the the, the backing is quite good. It's quite clear. The decals themselves seem to be quite flat. They're not that pronounced, which is quite nice. And the decals are in good condition, which is nice too. Obviously. I've got an older genera uh, a newer generation instruction leaflet and this bears no resemblance to the original instruction leaflet because these instruction leaflets were heavily influenced by Ravel. Still got the PK5 number on there and in 70 second scale and the back it shows you the different options that you have with this kit. You've got the Patrol de France as you can see and the German ground attack um, variant there and its colours which is quite nice. Quite like that. You've also got a colour guide on the back of here, which you didn't on, on the original, which gives you the, an idea of all the, the humbral colours that you, you should use on this kit, which is good. And now I want to show you, first of all, the difference in the sprues. Uh, no, sorry, I'm going to show you the sprues from the early release kit, and then I'm going to show you the difference in the sprues from the later release kit. In the early release kit, you had a white, what I call a white fuselage sprue and a red wing sprue. And you can see the two colour kit, nice, you know, the, the, the idea of the wooden mock-up that they were supposed to copy, which was actually an artist impression, because when the Dassault Dornier prototype, uh, Alpha Jet prototype was built, it was actually built completely different to this. It looked nothing like this. Well, it did look like this, but the tail end looked nothing like this. It was very different. You can see the, the pronounced sweep on the tail fin, which is totally, totally incorrect. It's far too tapered at the top of the fin there, and there's far too much sweep in the fin, and it's got too much cord here at the base of the fin. And, and this was altered with the new... Um, with the new update as you can see here you can see the actual update on the fin there totally different in actual fact if i put it over the top you can see it better now that's 
that's the new tool, the burgundy coloured one, and the white one underneath is the old tool. And you can see how they drastically changed the tail fin on the new revamp moulding. So what I want to just quickly do now is I just want to quickly show you the, uh, the, the, the parts because the parts are quite interesting. On the air intakes, I'll just show you the front view of the air intakes. You can see how they're quite square. Now the Alpha Jet, I'm looking at the image of the even the trainer prototype that I've got here in the Fredericksham Harbour Museum. The image I've got, the, Al the Alpha Jet's air intakes are actually curved. They were completely curved. There was no 90 degree angle to them, no square looking orifice at the front of the air intake whatsoever. And the splitter plate was about the same size as the back section of that air intake. Um, which again in the in the matchbox kit is not correct but the jet pipe cover at the back is actually quite accurate that stayed that sort of shape right the way through the other issue is the nose comb because the nose comb is sort of it's not really long and thimble shaped enough or it's not really long and tapered enough for either or it's a sort of a, a hybrid between the two it's not quite thin enough and it's not quite fat enough if you know what i mean um, the German Alpha Jet A had a thimble style nose which was similar to all the prototypes and the French aircraft had um, some bore avionics system into the aircraft to help pilots learn how to use the aircraft as an advanced trainer and the, the nose came out to be slightly longer and, th and more thimble shaped. It was less tapered at the front end. Um, so this is more like an Alpha Jet E which was the French Ecole trainer variant than it is an Alpha Jet A, but it's still incorrect for both variants, as you can see. The uh, the surface detail on the kit itself is pretty bereft of any lines whatsoever. There's not an awful lot going on there. It's just basically a fuselage with nothing on it. Um, interior detail. Again, there's not a lot going on there, is there? Not a lot. Even the wheel wells. There's a little bit of detail on the wheel well there, but there's not a lot. And the front wheel well is a waste of time because it's only the front door that's opened up. It's pretty terrible, to be honest with you. The The matchbox kit is pretty dire. I'm going to be honest with you. It's pretty terrible. It has got a couple of things going for it, though. Um, you've got a couple of nicely sculptured, detailed pilots, which um, a lot of my subbers like these guys from matchbox. I think they're quite nice. And they are finely sculptured and nice, which is good. And also the, the panel lines for the wings and tail planes are actually recessed, which is quite nice as well. Um, a lot of the old days, the early 70s releases, you found that these parts were um, raised panel lines and they, they were pretty dire. They were pretty broad. So that's, that's, that's the sprues. The other thing I wanted to show you is that with the old tool, uh, the old tall wing sprue was red, but obviously on the new tool it's white, so that's a change as well. And the red colour was substituted for this burgundy colour on what I call the fuselage sprue. So it's not the same colour, but it's it's the same sort of effect, if you know what I mean, which is quite interesting. We'll just put all this stuff back in here now, so I can put this stuff away. And then what I want to do very quickly is just shift... Let's just go through the gump on this model so that I can get this tacked off. I don't want to, don't want this video to keep going on and on and on. Um, and I'll just read you some of the gump on this kit and give you a nice image there for the Type 1 boxing. Now then, the model itself that we're doing an inbox review on is actually the Matchbox Alpha Jet serial number PK5 in the 172nd scale purple range. The kit's release date was 1972. The model, the initial model release, the 72 release, had decals for two options. One was a German trainer prototype and the second was a French trainer prototype. But these were based on the artist impression that was shown to the French and German governments to win the, um, the contract to have these aircraft supplied to their relative air forces. The revised release, which came out in 1982, had the first variant was the Patriot de France French aerobatic team based at Chateau d'Un in France 1981 and the second variant was the Jacques Bomber Gerschwader JBG 49 based at Fürstenfeldbruck in Germany in 1980. 
Now the aircraft's dimensions in model form is 6.25 inches long by about 5.5 inches span and it should sit about 2 inches high on its undercarriage. The original version, the original release, had 15 parts on a white plastic sprue, 13 parts on a red plastic sprue and one clear canopy part producing 29 parts in total. The revised kit substitutes the red sprue for a burgundy sprue but they also switched the, um, the, the sprue colours round and it would then have 15 parts on a burgundy sprue and 13 parts on a white sprue with the one clear plastic part but still producing 29 parts in total. Options and costs. There are quite a number of options and costs to go through um, and I normally would narrow these down to like the scale that I've got the kit in but I wanted to include some of these because some of these kits are really worthy of note and some of them are really worthy to be added to this video list. Um, in 144 scale Ravel do quite a nice Alpha Jet AE and a Patrol de France variant all I think in different boxings and this kit retails for about 10 to 12 pound. In 1 100 scale Heller produce a sort of a mediocre kit of an Alpha Jet A and E um, which retails for about 20 pound and there are two companies, one Model X and one Roskompf M RMM, who produce an Alpha Jet E in the Model X variant and an Alpha Jet A in the Roskompf variant. And these are both the reboxed Heller kits. Got no pricings on these, I'm sorry about that. Before I advance, I just want to let you know what the different A, E and whatever means. The Alpha Jet A variant is a German version. This was the ground attack variant. The B variant is the Belgian version. Although really the B variant is an E variant, <laughs> a bit complicated I know, but a lot of model companies who build the Belgian version actually call it a B variant. The E variant, which stood for Ecole, was the French version, which is the pure trainer, and they also use the E variant for the Patrel de France jets. So in one seventy second scale, um, probably the best of the bunch in seventy second scale is the Airfix kit, which produce an Alpha Jet A and a B. And this kit retails for anything between 3 and £31, depending on how greedy the person is trying to sell it. But I must emphasise the fact that the Airfix Alpha Jet is one of the best in 72nd scale options. Fujimi also do an Alpha Jet A and an Alpha Jet E, and this kit retails for about £1.20 to £16. And this kit isn't that bad either, although it does have some accuracy issues around the tail fin, um, although not so much in the same way that the Matchbox kit is. Heller produce a rather crude Alpha Jet A and E, but it's sort of on a par with a Fujimi kit. Pricings go from £5 to £15. The Matchbox Alpha Jet A, E and Petrol de France variants and different boxings go for anything between £1 and £10. And then you've got probably the worst 72nd scale kit of an Alpha Jet in, I've ever seen. It's a Starfix kit. They produce an Alpha Jet A and an E for about £2 to £12. And there's a company called YUMTK who produce an Alpha Jet A, and this is mixed media injection molded and vacuum form kit. No pricing is available on that, but I have seen some of the parts, and it doesn't look that brilliant, and it also looks quite a complicated and difficult build. Um, Blue Ribbon Collector Series also produce an Alpha Jet A. This is a reboxed Heller kit. No pricing is available on that. Heller also produce an Alpha Jet of the Patrol de France variant, and this is the reboxed Airfix kit for about ten to fifteen pound. Heller Humbrol also produce an Alpha Jet of the Patrol de France, and this is a reboxed Heller kit for three to fifty pound. Lodella produce an Alpha Jet A and E, which is the reboxed Heller kit. No pricing is available on that. MPC, who also are the marketing uh, American market for Airfix, they produce an Alpha Jet A which is a reboxed Airfix kit, no pricing is available on that. Matchbox AMT produce an Alpha Jet A and E, no pricing is available on that. Ravel did an Alpha Jet A and an E, early release. 80s variants were the Esai kit, and the 90s to present day release are the Heller kits. And these kits retail for about £3.70 to £31 in total. Um, US Airfix produce the Airfix kit reboxed as a Patriot de France variant, no pricing is available on that. And there's a company called ZTS Plastic who produce an Alpha Jet B and an E, 
Um, try and avoid this at all costs because it's actually a Reebok Starfix kit and that retails for 10 to 14 pound. In 150th scale, Hella produced quite a nice Alpha Jet A and E and also re uh, another box of the Patrol de France variant. And these kits retail for anything between 18 and 50 pound, but they are quite nice. In 48th scale, Esai produce an Alpha Jet A, a B and an E variant. These kits are quite cheap and can be bought for as little as five to seven pound, but I have seen them go for 15 at times. Kinetic build an Alpha Jet A and E, and they go for about 30 to 36 pound. Um, Kinetic also produce a Patrol de France variant in a two Alpha Jet model kit pack. And this kit goes for anything between 20 and 46 pound. There's two aircraft in the same box. PJ Productions produce an Alpha Jet A and an E, but beware this is a resin and vac form kit, and it retails for about £64. And Wingman models produce an Alpha Jet A and a B, and this is the kinetic kit reboxed for about £60. Esai Scalecraft build an Alpha Jet A, B, and E. This is the reboxed Esai kit, no pricings on that. Hella produce an Alpha Jet A and a Patrol de France variant. This is a reboxed Esai kit as well for 650 to 40 quid. And Ravel Esai also produce an Alpha Jet A, B, and E. And this again is a reboxed Esai kit for about 10 to 20 pounds. You can actually get an Alpha Jet in 132nd scale. There's a company called Flieger Horst who produce an Alpha Jet A. Um, this is a resin kit, so it's it's not going to be an easy build, and it's not cheap. It's about 130 quid. And Flugzeug build an Alpha Jet A, and I believe this is an injection and vac form multimedia kit. And this, again, I've got no pricings available on that. But this model was reboxed by a company called Presa, who build the Alpha Jet A as well, which is the reboxed Flugzeug kit. Again, no pricings on that. Now then, conclusions. Quite a bit to say about this. And where do you really start? Well, this kit is the first in a new series of videos that I call Kits to Avoid Like the Plague. The Pro Builders review show the inadequacy of this kit only too well, and it rarely gets any praise from this sector whatsoever. It truly is one of Matchbox's howlers. And if you want to build a production Alpha Jet, you should know that the tail fin, the air intakes, are the wrong shape completely though the tail fin was corrected in the 1982 release that featured the Patriot de France aircraft on the box artwork. Also, the nose cone is a poor shape for an Alpha Jet B and E variants, but it's completely the wrong shape for the Alpha Jet A. It, as is all with Airfix kit, uh, with Matchbox kit, sorry, it's a very basic kit um, with very little detail, and it did set the standard for most Matchbox release jet aircraft kits. It is worthy of note that the Matchbox kit is the most accurate model of the wooden mock-up artist impression that you can buy anywhere in the world. But you must also remember that this was never an aircraft that flew. It was just like an artist impression. I do believe they did build a ground test Alpha Jet, which was made of wood, which I do also believe looks similar to the Matchbox model but I've never seen images of this aircraft, so I can't guarantee that it ever existed. But I do believe it did, um, and it was used for, to try and secure the contract from the French and German governments. Now, if you want to build one of these artist impression kits, you should only use one of the first two boxings that were released in 1972 or 1973. Also, the Matchbox AMT release kit will do for this too, and not the boxings that feature the Patrol de France and the Belgium Air Force Alpha Jets. These kits had revised tail fins, but still had the bad-shaped air intakes and the poor-shaped Alpha Jet E style nose cone. It is, however, still going to be a nostalgic build for me, and as I remember building this kit when I was about eight years old, and I didn't apply any paint anywhere, and I still enjoy playing airshow and the like for years and years. I will be building the French wooden mock-up. I'm pretty sure I'll be building the French wooden mock-up and the French prototype trainer Alpha Jet 01 from these two kits, which of course is the German Alpha Jet on the other side. I hope that this, uh, sorry, I hope that they will show the Matchbox kit's accuracy and the inaccuracy of what makes any sense at all. Alpha Jet kits to look out for are the Airfix and 72nd scale kit, which is really nice. I have built this kit before. 
it's a bit tricky to actually assemble the airframe, um, but it's it's quite a nice kit when it's finished. And in 48 scale, the E-side kit is not bad, but my choice would be the kinetic boxing in 48 scale. It's really, really nice. So that's the inbox review finished for the Alpha Jet from Matchbox. I hope this video has been of some use. Um, if you've got any queries, questions or anything, just pop them in the uh, the comments boxes at the uh, you know below this uh, video and i'll try and get back to you with some answers as quickly as i can um so that's it for now i hope all your model projects are going smooth and uh thanks for joining in and i'll catch you for the next one bye bye for now